Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So this is a part two of calcium homeostasis, vitamin D. Calcitonin. Now, you're familiar with vitamin D. You've been learning, hearing about vitamin even from your primary school. Oh, when children lack vitamin D, rickets and so on. So it's not new to you. So we're going to now be talking about the physiology of it. Why are we discussing a vitamin under hormones? Why are we not discussing all that vitamins as hormones? Why is it special? That's the question we should ask ourselves. Initially, Vitamin D was just taken as a vitamin, nothing more to it. But it was discovered that, apart from being a vitamin, of course, vitamins are micronutrients, okay? They are taken from the food, micronutrients. So vitamin D also is gotten from foods like cod liver oil, fish, milk, and so on and so forth. But it was not discovered that apart from being taken from the food, the body can synthesize it from the start, fresh, like that, from its own body. And what is that? Cholesterol from under the skin. Through the what? The action of ultraviolet rays touching the skin. It begins to convert cholesterol. Okay? From cholesterol which is known, the real name is 7-dehydrocholesterol from under the skin and converts it to vitamin D which vitamin D is known as cholecalciferol that's the animal, the type of vitamin D that we use okay, you have other kinds of ego calciferol I think that's about in plants okay but the one that we have is called d3 and it's called coli coli calciferol coli the one of our we have ego so vitamin d3 vitamin known as vitamin d3 so this is ultraviolet uv rays converses to this now we now have calciferol this is the inactive form okay it now needs to be activated into the hormonal form so this is the form that you can take in your meal when you eat micronutrient and this is the form that it is converted to when you will raise act on cholesterol under the skin but then it is now converted into the hormonal form that is involved in calcium homeostasis and very simple very very simple in the liver there is hydroxylation okay at the 25th position of the structure of vitamin d okay so 25 hydroxylation takes place there it now converts it into 25 hydroxy let's put it as oh hydroxy choline calciferol this one has another name it's called calcidiol okay calcidiol then in the kidneys another hydrosylation takes place that now makes it at the first position number one position so it now makes it what one 25 dihydroxy cholecalciferol which is also known as calcitriol okay calcitriol so that's it that's, that is it so this is now the active form of vitamin D that has hormonal effects helping in calcium hormones so very quickly bone intestine bone kidney the same way 
um, parathyroid hormone acts okay so what is the effect on the intestine the intestine remember when we were even talking about parathyroid hormone we said it acts indirectly so it uses this vitamin so vitamin e is the main thing that helps in the absorption of calcium how does it do that it's a steroid hormone okay S steroid from cholesterol so that means it engineers protein synthesis okay steroid hormone it doesn't need all these second messengers and so on and so forth it just goes into the epithelial cells of the intestines and then they synthesize a protein known as cow binding okay it's a protein that binds calcium cow binding okay so that protein binds four molecules of calcium and transports them into the bloodstream okay so that's how it, it acts so it ha helps to increase levels of calcium without vitamin d the body cannot absorb calcium very much you'll be lacking in calcium and so on so then in the bone in the bone it in conjunction with parathyroid hormone it increases osteoclastic activity in order to increase bone. but there is another trick it also helps in the build up and mineralization of bone so it's doing two opposite things but they are not ironic you know what why why it does that in the sense that it's called there's something called bone remodeling bone remodeling okay it's just a way of the bone renewing itself for it to remain fresh okay so like old bone old bone material minerals is taking away osteoclastic activity and then it is now brought back to be formed to remineralize it so that it becomes fresh i don't know how else you can understand it but it gives away the old bone and then allows new mineralization to be formed so there is it's a process of give and take so the bone is not just static you are losing minerals and it's taking it so Vitamin D helps to do that, bone remodeling, okay? So that's what it does. Then in the kidneys, the same thing, like parathyroid hormone, it aids the reabsorption of calcium, okay? Just that, it does that around the proximal tubule, then parathyroid around the distal tubule. So basically, that's, that's just what you need to know about in the intestines, increases calcium, re- absorption okay so basically that's that then um calcitonin is very very easy to to, to not need to spend calcitonin does the opposite of parathyroid parathormone and vitamin d in the sense that it helps to reduce the levels of calcium in the blood by inhibiting osteoclastic activity okay but it's a minor even if you don't have calcitonin your body will still function well with the presence of vitamin d and parathyroid hormone you can get good calcium homeostasis but it just aids it okay so it's it's um, secreted from parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland okay so calcitonin calcitonin secreted from para follicular cells of the thyroid so when you have those thyroid follicles by the side of it para the side of those thyroid follicles you have those cells called para that secrete calcitonin and it helps to inhibit osteoclastic activity which reduces this all right so now after the break we're going to be looking at the disorders hyper and hypocalcemia what could cause it and what are the symptoms don't go anywhere after this break
all right you're welcome back now let's now talk about the disorders okay effect of hyper and hypo parathyroid disorders so you could have something called um, hyper parathyroidism okay and hypo parathyroidism now this hyper and hypo you can have primary and secondary and what do we mean by that although the main thing there is hyper and hypokaisima whether it's primary or, okay but it's just so that you will not be you understand case of mcq now primary par hyper parad what do we mean by the primary type primary it means that you can have a tumor or this primary it's usually a tumor that is secreting excess parathyroid hormone excess whether the levels of calcium it's normal it doesn't care because of the tumor it just secretes like that that it overrides the negative feedback mechanism so what do you think will happen there is hypercalcemia hyper what calcemia because of excess parathyroid hormone secretion okay so you can have secondary in the sense that yes there is excess secretion of parathyroid hormone but there is no hypercalcemia instead there could be normal levels of what or most commonly reduce hypocalcemia and that results from vitamin d deficiency so when vitamin d is deficient there's they cannot be reabsorption there cannot be absorption of calcium when from the meals in the intestines okay so there's reduced level of calcium which is now provoking this one to secrete excess in order to correct it so there's hyper parathyroidism but it is secondary okay to vitamin d deficiency so this one mostly comes as hypocalcemia this one mostly comes as hypercalcemia okay so what we are interested in is hyper or hypoca just like you have hyperglycemia hypoglycemia insulin so these ones they are regulating similar things and levels of organic nutrient glucose levels of minerals calcium ions and so on so it's very simple what is it we are interested in whether there's hypercalcemia hypocalcemia and whatever the cause could be when there is hypercalcemia what do you think can result there will be ecg abnormalities if I'm both in hyper and hypocalcemia, because calcium is very important in everything contraction of muscles. Okay, so in hyper hypercalcemia, you can have ECG abnormalities. Okay, so what else can you get from hypercalcemia? There could also be lack loss loss of appetite low appetite okay low appetite and cns depression very interesting is depression of cns activity hypercalcemia okay so let's look at hypo hypocalcemia calcemia so what you think can result there's also ecg abnormalities let's put it here ecg abnormalities okay then you now have you can have what is known as carpopedal spasm carpopedal spasm carpopedal spasm what do you mean by that? It's flexion of this wrist joint. Look at it. Flexion. Then flexion of the thumb. Then extension of the fingers. 
Okay, it's called Trosio sign. I hope I can spell it. Trosios sign. Trosio sign. Like this. Okay? Hypocalcemia, carbopedal spasm. Okay, but when it's now very severe, hypocalcemia can lead to laryngeal spasm, which can lead to as asphyxiation. The person can die from that. Okay, so that's that's what happens. Then um, vitamin D deficiency. Okay, it's very easy. You already know it. In children, it causes what rickets because there is no enough mineralization of the bones. Okay, calcium cannot go in there to mineralize it. So there is muscle weakness and skeletal abnormalities which manifest as bold legs. Okay, then in adults it's called osteomalacia. So vitamin D deficiency. Rickets commonly in children, young children. Then in adults, osteomalacia in adults. Adults doesn't result in bow leg, but there's muscle weakness, okay? Bone and muscle weakness, osteomalacia. So basically, that's just what you need to know about calcium homostasis, parathyroid hormone, vitamin D, calcitonin, all right? So see you in the next video.